spiritual thing. You don't play with music. You see, because when the higher forces give you a gift of music, musicianship, it must be well used for the good of humanity. Taxpayer, you contract the virus, too bad. You're busy in a family, you get four girls. Three, they die three, one month after the other. Is that normal? And then the mother, 65 years old, she must look after her children. How does she sit her child on pension? Three daughters, a month apart. Funeral policy you must ask for a discount. You're asking for a discount on a dead body. That's how bad it is. Within this year, all this was in full. See from here, see they've started here now. Yeah. All this was empty, mm. that side was empty, and that side was empty. Mm. Now it's all here. It's a, it's a dramatic increase. Just in Dudley Street Cemetery alone, which is, we're looking at 28 to 30 funerals per Saturday. In the next month, the cemetery will definitely be full. It's getting out of hand, really. We're having quite a lot of young people dying, really. Gonna, it's, it's, gonna, it's, worse, it's gonna get worse than this. We're burying four people from one family. We're gonna have homes standing empty because everybody is dying at home. I'm Desiree Boyson. I'm from South Africa. I've been doing HIV work for about 17 years now. Okay. Um, all is voluntary. I was employed and then because of medical problems and then I was fired. HIV AIDS is regarded as leprosy in Nigeria because once you have it your way, the person that has it doesn't even want to know he has it. In 
Nigeria or in Africa, nobody wants to come up to say I am HIV positive because you'll be neglected, you won't be cared for, everybody deserts you, they tell you you're no more part of them, you have no friend, you have no family, nobody to talk to, nobody to confide in. some people in the rural areas they don't even know what is AIDS they know people are dying they they never thought of it that they are dying of AIDS just talk about sex pregnancy is a taboo not to talk of HIV people like hide it they don't want people to know they don't even want to go for the test so they think it is better for them to just keep it to themselves people are like oh i don't want to have anything to do with him i don't even want to shake him because i'm going to have it but with the even so called um, you know be a wide range of you know information that you don't get AIDS from shaking somebody who has HIV, but people don't still want to have anything to do with you. But here back in Africa, emotionally, I think it kills you faster than the disease itself. Because people, your families don't want to talk to you. Your friends are like, oh, I don't want to have anything. You are losing your job. Your children are running away from you. Your wife is gone. Your dad, your mom, everybody is just gone. And you are just alone. So emotionally, you are dead. My name is Georgiana. I'm a person living with HIV. I'm married with a son. So because of this HIV problem, I lost my job. It makes me feel lonely. From morning to night, I'll be indoors. If immediately somebody finds out that a friend or a sister or a relation has HIV, they find it difficult to near the person. They can even to talk to you, even to shake hands, they find it difficult. Those that used to come to you, they will just run away because they think that when they come nearer you, you infect them. They don't know it's not like that. Even my landlady, she has noticed that I'm losing weight. She has called me two times. What is wrong with me? Do I have TB? If she comes to know about this, she can say I should leave her house so that I'm not infected her and other tenants. But I didn't tell anybody and I will not. Someone like Fela, his name will go down in history as someone who tried to create a change. If one man stood and was the voice of the people, it was my father. That, that's what changed his life. His coming to the US changed his life. When he came with his band, he was here for about a year. He met Sandra. Uh, yeah, she was with the Black Panther. She was very, you know, her ideology was Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, you know. Uh, and she exposed Fela to all these people. Mm. And that's what changed his life completely. And Fela was his ideas. You know, I cannot be an African and listen to what Fela had to say and not be proud. Like uh, Fred Hampton said from the Black Panthers, you know, um, you have to talk to the people. Um, he said, you have to put your ear to the ground. And if you put your ear to the ground, you'll hear uh, the heartbeat of the mess. And that's, that's what you listen to when you listen to Fela and music like that. You know what I'm saying? Shababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
Some of them promise you heaven, but I see a whole lot of bullshit ism, schism, imperialism in the form of spirituality, slave mentality, escape reality. What we supposed to just suffer and smile and be content, sending our prayers to the clouds? Uh -huh. I want my heaven now, freedom on earth, and if the preach ain't with us, then we taking this church. What is it worth to have the biggest religion when the people got miserable living conditions? No water, no lights, uh -huh. no rights. All over Africa we fight, but we have to unite. Cause ain't no power in the gospel when the priest putting powder in his nostril and the elders' council fails to lead and the children suffer from daily need and the people can barely eat. Is it a sin to stand up and fight against the ones that put us in handcuffs? God damn, what happened to the daily bread? Spread love. And that what the Bible said, but in the name of the Bible, how much love is spread compared to how much love is shared? Every day my people live inside the body. Every day is the same day. Every day my people Everything that I showed her was written by Christians still She got the hell up, out of the place For the ransom, then about me shaking her faith Now, knowledge is power, we spread information How strong is your faith, what it take to be shaken Yo, I think she missed what Jesus was saying Can't keep your eyes closed to the revelation You could be speaking in tongues, I'll be speaking to sons and daughters My reflection, of course, with them, the water is Beautiful, attractive, my musical contraption Classified as a usual practice, but That's what it take to be a man Free the land, crash down to Babylon like the seed of the sand Peace to the fam, I want you all to stay strong And live long like a play song, come on This time will be more than a riot. Uh, can't keep quiet. This time will be more than a riot. Can't keep quiet. This time will be more than a riot. Uh, can't keep quiet. This time will be more than a riot. This way of life ain't right. Pray all day and night. Don't fight. Hope up, no up. Work three jobs and fill the gold cup. No water, no food, no lights, no rights, no power to the people tonight. It's gone. Division and it works in prison. Look around, how my niggas is living. Everything we make, they taking it to the bank. While we sitting up in the church to give banks. Don't you know the preacher got bank? Uh -uh, uh -uh. Don't you know the dick smoke gang? Uh -uh, uh -uh. Did you ever think the Bible was a prank? Uh -uh, uh -uh. Somebody about to faint. Oh, they came, they had the Bible. We had the land, now nah, we got the Bible. They got the land, and what did you believe in? Heaven to hell. Life is what you make it, so that's why I rebel. Uncle Sam, got blood on his hands. Really God, how the devil can dance. Nobody wanna help a nigga. Put your hands together, do it yourself, my nigga. Don't sit there. You won't have a buddy rushing to die. So do something, don't just suck and smile. Every day my people get inside the bus. Every day is a sick day. Every day my people get inside the bus.
priest will tell you, don't tell them about condoms. Don't, don't, don't preach condoms here. It's filthy. We don't want to hear about it. And I'm, I, I'm, like, I'm saying to him, Father, if we speak about condoms and they hear it, that it's coming from the church, then it's fine. So that's why even if you become HIV, people are scared. Why? Because, hey, we heard in mess. So now I'm HIV, what am I going to do? I was promiscuous. I was dirty. I had sex. The world is getting modern every day, so I think the young people think of sex first. Because AIDS affects everybody, no matter how young you are or how old you are. The subject that, that teenagers don't want to talk about, well it's sexually transmitted, that I know, and you can't get it by touching someone or by drinking out of the same cup. Most of the young people are dying of AIDS now. It's most of the younger people that are dying of AIDS than the older people, I guess. It's C, Jaffa, okay. and cocaine. A lot. Violence and drugs being sold everywhere. Well, yet you can't take drugs. Like, um, it affects your like, thinking and uh, it leads to sex and you don't think whether you should use a condom or, or like not. Uh, I knew of two people and they and they've died. Two passed away. One last week and one about three weeks ago. No club, no love. Music is a spiritual thing. You don't play with music. You see, because when the higher forces give you the gift of music, musicianship, it must be well used for the good of humanity. outside tell us get out how in the end to why we act why do we come here enjoy to drink out. enjoy ourselves some from have sex yes nah, we tell. don't have sex bro <laughs> don't tell lies now <laughs> are cats using condoms or no payback is the name pay back. not payback the way i see it you can't condom. eat sweets with a paper man <laughs> yeah. you can never even eat sweets with a paper really there is condoms can't eat sweets with a paper man doesn't taste that. What if the sweet's gonna kill you though? Uh, don't eat it. Willing to take that risk. Only in another Malice, six well. years' time you'll find out. I'm probably <laughs> yeah. dead by that time. The world is full of sin, you might as well go. If you don't die of AIDS in another eight years' time, you'll either die you look gangsterous. Is that how it goes down in the ghetto? Yeah. Organized. Yeah. 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 No, they don't use condom. 
family girls don't buy this. Because they will told you that I don't have anything in my body. They will say they are not allowed. Because prostitutes always use condom. And prostitute is clean than get with, with his family. Yes. Many guys told me to they don't want condom. So I, I have to tell them I don't do that. I don't know what's what's in your body and you don't know what's in my body. If you give some guys condom and the guy will promote the condom and cut the condom head. The top of the condom you cut it off and you wear it so that the baby will the guy will think that the guy put in a condom, but the guy cut head of the condom. Just murder and a show and time. I'm a sex worker. That's how I earn my living. I've had offers. Like a girl will put down a thousand rand and put a condom and say to me, choose. Now, I'm a single mother. And one thing I know, my life comes first. If, if, if I have to look at the money and I forget about my life, then that's easy for me to get eight. Monday night, I had to go to a client and um, he said to me, he doesn't, believe, he doesn't use condoms. I understood to him, but there's nothing will go without a condom. He offered me hundred dollars, which I don't know how much it is, but anyway, I told him money is nothing to me. I, money don't make me, I make the money. And last night I had an African guy who was trying to be clever with me. What he did was, I said to him, I want to put the, I always put the condom. I always put the condom, I want to make sure. He insisted that he puts the condom. And then he tore the condom, the very front part of the condom. But as soon as he tried to insert his penis inside me, I could feel that there is no kind. And I said, excuse me, I need to go to the toilet. And he said, why? I said, please get up. So when he got up, I just saw the thing was torn. I said, what happened? He said, well, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was torn. I said, okay, let's do this. Let me put the condom. And I put three condoms in him. He was not really impressed with me. I didn't really have a good time there. Not that I do, but I came back very upset. I, I, I pray to God that I want to be a good mother. She's my only daughter and she doesn't have a father. And I'll try to give her the best education that I never got and to give her the best life that I never got. And I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want her to end up doing this job. Not, none of my family, I mean, they don't know what I do because sooner or later I'm gonna leave this job. Because when I leave it, I wanna forget about it, leave it in my past, you know, bury it in a big hole. Poor, they take risk in order to survive, and those risks predispose them to HIV. Young girls and, and people that are, people I've worked with, they'll tell you it's more important to survive right now through sex work than to be killed by HIV ten years along the line. That's it, you know, and the young girls in Wentworth who I try and counsel and I run a support group on a Saturday, they meet you in my home. They say to me, Des, what do we do? The married men don't want to wear these condoms. He goes back to his wife, I've got nothing to lose. I am going to die. I cannot guarantee these girls they're not going to die. I cannot guarantee them a good life. In Wentworth, in a one bedroom, little, a small flat, you get like 16 people living. All of them are unemployed. Nobody's employed. Okay. So they're saying if he gives me 10 rand, I can I can buy food. He's buying the beers. Why must I worry? You know, even if you tell them you're not worth a beer, you're worth more than a beer, but this come on man, you know. At least there's gonna be bread at the end of the day. So the married men don't wanna use these condoms. They're sleeping with the colored girls and the wives getting infected. People's minds have gone low. Food, 
No food, no water, no light, no government. So the people are edgy. There's no solid situation. The roots have been lost. A lot of the children that are infected with the virus are from the urban settings or they come to the urban settings as street children. Many of the children are sexually active that come to us. Some of them having come from the streets, it was their way of survival. And there's a lot of hopelessness to so what do I live for? What is there still to come? And I think giving a child that is HIV positive hope for the future, telling them to go to school as an example, and they're saying what for, for two years in order to die?
we are poor, we are, we are very poor in our country. We cannot afford food, balanced diet, fruits that we need so that our, we will not uh, continue leaning every day. Okay. So that's my problem, see, I have, I'm lean and many people are noticing it. Many that know me when I'm walking along the street, they call me, what's wrong with you? I say, I don't know, somebody like me. They, I, I feel like I have appetite, but to eat, to get the things I need is my another wahala. There's no money. I don't do anything. My husband is just managing small carpentry work. So it's not always that he gets the money. Like other countries, foreign countries like your country, even if they don't take drugs, they have all those things and eat well. And you will know that they are sick. Africa, many people are dying of HIV AIDS and many are not coming out because they don't know where to go to, they don't know people to help them. Years of tears and sorrow lead me to never to fear tomorrow. Food for thought that some never appear to swallow. Raw is the wind of Chicago, the way they slay dark. Destroying life, the regular trademark. But God is watching, yeah, God is watching and observing. Ready to serve justice to those that are deserving. Several minutes later, the creator will innovate a way to pay the police and the beast to suppose the righteousness. And all we can do is just fight and just live. Yeah, let's live. Why say I didn't die? Because my name is Anikulaku. I have death in my pouch. I can't die. They can't kill me. Why are you not taking antiretroviral drugs? I cannot afford it. It's too expensive. They say like uh, one dose from 75,000. And you cannot just take it once. So I cannot afford it. I don't have anything. I don't have money. All these drug companies and our government is part to blame. They allow people who are HIV to be guinea pigs. They come in, they say, use this. Each one is using so like this. There's like 10 different drugs used on you in one day and you haven't eaten. 
You carry on now, you're hoping your hopes are high, you're on the drug trials, you're on the drug trials. Six months after that, you go back, what happened, where's the, the clinic for the drug trials? No, they're gone. What about the side effects, what happens to you? They're gone, they've left. <laughs> help please not only me nigeria as a whole even africa there are many of us like this some are hiding and dying in their houses for me the journal represented the whole essence of the fight for access to drugs sometime in december she fell ill she was so ill she could barely walk the opportunistic infections were coming one after the other. You think I leave your side, baby? You know me better than that. You think I leave you down when you're down on your knees? I wouldn't do that. I'll tell you you're right when you want. the drugs that I know had saved many other lives in the West, but we can't find it in Africa. to the Shagamo Teaching Hospital. She couldn't walk. We had to, she had to lean on us to walk. She was weighing just about 39 kg. The first day we got the drug, there were so many drugs. I mean, she was so happy when she was coming out of the drug program that first day, just getting the drugs. And I just realized that the fact that she had this drug in her hands alone was already bringing her back. And you know what? She lived. She lived because she had access to drugs. But many others are dying because they don't.
because there's no gloves. So these kids are also getting infected by the fluids because they're staying at home from school to see to the mothers. Then when the mother passes away and the child has been away from school for three months, there's no welfare that will say, why is this child staying away? The principal doesn't even think with the teacher, why is this child not at school? My friend come from prison. Him, they look for work. Waka, 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 day and night. Policeman stop him for road. Him say, Mr. I charge you for wandering. Waiting him, they find. Palava. Him, they find. Palava. Him, they get. Palava. Him, they find. Palava. Child comes back to school after three months, where were you? I was at home. A child will never tell you what was wrong with the parent or what the parent died or things like that because of the stigma. So the child won't say. Then the principal tells you, go home. Normally they say, go home and fetch your mother. Now how do you fetch your mother that's dead? Then you've got children living in the home. There's no mother, there's no father, both parents are dead. So the eldest one is 13, she's selling herself. She's a sex worker to see to these.
We work a lot with children that are HIV positive, children that are abandoned, abused, or that they are orphaned due to their parents having died of the virus. And their brothers and sisters, so you're often looking at one or two children left in a family of eight. A lot of the children that are infected with the virus are from the urban settings or they come to the urban settings as street children. Many of the children are sexually active that come to us. Some of them having come from the streets, it was their way of survival. Often the children are not so scared about dying. One of my little girls came to me and she said, Patrick, it is not the fact that we are dying. It is the way we are dying. That is what is most frightening for us. And what are people going to say about us after we are dead? Are they going to see us in a positive way or in a negative way? Um, as an example, one of our children passed on in April of this year. She died of AIDS and we prayed for her as a person having died of AIDS. And her, her friends were really upset with me. They said, you know, Patrick, how can you talk about our friend like that? How can you tell everybody that she died of AIDS? And I said, it's really important that we break the silence that people know what is happening within our own community, within our own family. And the children saw it as an insult. They saw that we were actually insulting their friend because we were telling people that she had died of AIDS. And they would have preferred us to say, say that she died of something else, whether it be TB or one of the other related illnesses. Um, I'm of the opinion that people need to know. Um, other children that were HIV positive came to me and they questioned me. They said, when they die, am I also going to tell everybody that they had AIDS? And unfortunately, many people see AIDS as promiscuity, and especially for the girls. Um, many of them have been raped, abused, gang raped quite often, um, and we, these girls contract AIDS as a result of that. But they are still sitting with the, the notion that they are to blame, or that their family name is going to be brought down. You know, our girl that, that passed on in April, you know, she came here, she was gang raped. Through working through that whole rape, she then discovered in that process that she was HIV positive. And as time went, she eventually did not want to go to school. Um, she really just started giving up on hope. She didn't want to take the medication because once she took the medication, the other children knew that she was HIV positive. And she was the most beautiful child you could know. I think her death was a lot of hopelessness and we didn't know how to give her more hope. When a child loses hope, when they lose their sense of belonging 
and when they lose uh, their spark to live, you know, they, their physical condition just deteriorated. Um, unfortunately, she died in hospital and not with her family, and because we only heard about it afterwards and couldn't attend the funeral because people didn't let us know. She didn't want us at the funeral in case we said she died of AIDS. Thank you.